In this video, we're going to examine flexible components inside of Autodesk Inventor. The design criteria that I'm trying to establish is I have the same subassembly here, arm assembly, occurrence one, and occurrence two, and I'd like to have them in two different positional controls for the angles for which they're raised up and down. Now, I can do this by making the subcomponents flexible. The idea of a flexible component essentially grants whatever degree of freedom is inside of that subassembly to the next level up. For instance, if I have a degree of freedom open inside of this cylinder subassembly, the gray cylinder there, then I will be able to utilize that degree of freedom at the next level up. Now, when you control flexibility, it only goes up one level of the assembly at a time. So let's begin by looking at this arm assembly occurrence one. I'll go ahead and double click it to activate it. Here I can see there is a cylinder assembly inside of there. If I activate that assembly and zoom in, I can see that there is a limiting constraint, a insert plus or minus that allows me to control the stroke of the cylinder. So if I click and hold on the cylinder rod, I can move it in and out. Notice how the other occurrence is also updating in the same manner because it is the exact same assembly. Now, if I were to turn back up a level into the arm assembly, you can see it updates its position based on where I was moving that cylinder rod. However, at this level, I cannot move the entire assembly up and down because it is currently locked. It's a degree of freedom that is at a lower level of the design. In order to get it at this level, I need to make that cylinder assembly flexible. I'll right click on the cylinder assembly one and choose the flexible option. This will put a little icon in front of your cylinder assembly that looks like a couple of pistons. With a cylinder assembly flexible, if I click and hold on the yellow bar here, I can actually move this up and down. And as you can see, the arm assembly two moves with it as well because the arm assembly has two occurrences. If I return back up another level in the design, and I try to click and hold on that arm assembly again, you can see it doesn't move. So what I need to do is make the arm assembly flexible too. So let me collapse my browser there a little bit. I'll right click on arm assembly one and choose flexible. Also right click on arm assembly two and make that flexible. So to recap, I have a cylinder body that has a flexible degree of freedom inside of it that has then been made flexible inside of the next level up, the arm assembly. And now at the flexible component level, the top level of my design, I've made both occurrences of this flexible as well. This allows me a unique capability to come in here and change the angle of one and the other independent of each other by utilizing the flexible nature of Autodesk Inventor's components. So what my next step would be, to assign an angle constraint that locks in the specified angles that I want. I can actually take this even further and go on to create a positional representation of the arms raised and lowered as well. 